everybody welcome back to my channel it is the next episode now i will tell you that this one is really just about hanging the shelves it was supposed to be more but as you'll see in a minute we ate a little snack and it was totally on me 100 percent responsible <laughs> so um what i would tell you what we have is I have this palette coffee bar that says Awaken My Soul that I hang my Fry Live mugs on. I got it at the 99 cent only store at a 50% uh, sale that they were having. I think it was $2.50 after the sale. I think it was originally $4.99. Now, if you go online and you see these, they run up tens and tens, 20s, 30s, 60s. I've seen them as high as $80. I know that sounds crazy, but that's true. Now, this one is... Uh, you know MDF and wood it's not just wood so um, and I had to replace one of the hooks on there as you remember from the coffee mug holder video which I will link up here in the i cards up here okay basically if you look in the top right hand corner you'll see an eye in a circle if you click on that that's a link to videos I haven't really done that much I haven't really talked about that much in the last couple of uh, years maybe but I've been doing it recently just to help you guys find other content of mine okay so the other two things we have is two white floating shelves that we got at five below I actually purchased them from my office makeover but when we were started to do this DIY I was like ooh, I think I have the perfect thing for that space um, so what I'm saying to Jimmy here is where to place them yeah just keep watching you'll see but um i had a little bit of a hiccup so stay tuned <laughs> hi everybody it's the next day <laughs> i don't know what order it's going to be in so i feel like i should start every little thing with like hey everybody welcome back to my channel this is the next day <laughs> um again i don't know where this is going to be in the vlog but i will tell you that last night um we got started we did this and then I got a very important phone call that I had to take and we just didn't finish. It became, uh, by that time when I was done with the phone call, it was about after nine and then it was like too late to do work. So um, we're gonna get it started today. Let me flip you around real quick. So this is what we have so far. Um, we put the clock back up again so mom would have orientation. Uh, it's just something that you do when uh, someone's going through that. Um, we moved that track light. I asked Jimmy to move that track light to point down to the coffee bar because I had noticed that it was very dark right here. Um, and since they're track lights, that's the whole purpose. They can point in different directions. And you can see now, at least I think you can see how brightly lit it is compared to how it was in the video yesterday. Um, so now we're just going to pick up where we left off. Um, actually, I guess now would be a good time as any to tell you that, um, I did measure <laughs> and planned, um, but my the French cafe sign's not gonna fit up there. Um, I'm thinking about other things. You know, I originally made it to be the pantry sign to put on the outside of the pantry, um, obviously with the word pantry on it, um, but then I thought how French it looked being here. Um, but I think the Henson Cafe not think this the Henson Cafe will work so now I don't have to change it because it won't have double coffee in it um this will work at the very very top what I said to Jim in my mind was thinking like oh almost like a coffee cart you know like make it look like almost like a coffee cart that would be at like in the by the Champs d'Elysees I don't know if they have that I just made that up but you know just like a little coffee cart that sells and uh that's what the sign above was so oh he's leaving again um, so yeah, let's, we're going to crack a lock and bite. So the night before I was trying to figure out where I wanted this shelves placed. Now, here's how I described it to all my friends and family over the phone. I'll describe it to you. Where I was sitting about where the camera is. I was looking at the palette compared to the walls. And I said the walls in the spaces of the palette are much lighter and the shelves are lighter. So they will balance out. That's what I said, right? So that's where we went ahead and hung them. I don't know what I was thinking. It wasn't in my original plan to put shelves up that high, but we did. 
So what you did, I'm going to teach you how to do a hanging shelf, a floating shelf here. So what you do, or my tips are anyway, um, is we decide where you want your shelf to be and just put one mark in the middle. Then as you can see, you take the shelf down. Jimmy put the laser line on it and drew a line or a couple of different marks where the bottom of the shelf will lie on a level flat plane, okay? Then put the shelf there, tilt it down so that you can mark uh, where the two nail holes are. And then you can either uh, measure up or you can just like eyeball it. So what I mean by that is if you don't need it to be exactly by the, you know, 32nd of an inch matching something else, then what you could do is you could just mark the, the left and right of where the, the holes are going to be. And then you could throw the level line on that across those marks. And then you can actually make X's where you're going to drill your holes. So then the shelf might end up being just a tiny bit lower or a tiny bit higher. Again, if it's not that detrimental, this is definitely the easiest way to do it. If you can afford to give up, you know, if you have the leeway of a half an inch, then it's definitely the way to go. Okay. So now what he did was he found the two holes on the bottom shelf, made them level. And then what we did was we measured the space. I wanted one shelf to, to lie in the bottom space of the palette board. And I wanted one shelf to line in the top space of the palette board. So then what I had him do is I had him measure the distance between the two spaces from the top of the top space to the top of the bottom space. And we figured out that was 10 inches. So then just to make it easier on him, I had him take the ruler, measure 10 inches from the previous hole for the bottom shelf, put the laser level on it so it went straight up and down, like perfectly plumb, and then mark where the hole will be for the shelf above it. Do you see what I'm saying? Instead of having to re-level both shelves and re-measure both shelves, all you have to do is measure how far apart you want your shelves to be and measure both of your uh, screw holes there. And then your shelves will all automa automatically match up if they're the same shelf. Okay. So again, these two were the exact same identical, bought at the same time and everything. So no manufacturer's defects either. Okay. Now, how many times can I say, okay, I don't know. <laughs> so people have asked me about this level again this is a black and decker bullseye laser level um it's not cheap i actually bought it for my father for christmas one year quite a while back and um i really do love it i think it's i think it's just absolutely like the best gift i don't know yeah um so when you find out where your holes are going to be then you want to take your stud finder and you want to make sure that there's no stud behind there before you go ahead and drill for your mollies. This shelf kit came with these mollies and screws, which were perfect for it. Um, and it came with instructions. So in case you, you know, needed instructions as well. Um, then Jimmy likes to use this little Black & Decker electric screwdriver because it doesn't have as much torque as the big screw gun. And he doesn't fear uh, over drilling, over screwing the screw in and really making his life a living, you know, mess. Um, and then there you go. Now, if you put your shelf on there and it's a little loose, just take it off and screw your hole in, a, uh, screw your screw in a tiny bit more. And transversely, if your shelf is having, if you're having trouble hanging your shelf, then you go ahead and screw, pull the screw back out a tiny bit. And then you can go ahead and catch that keyhole. Okay. Now I just wanted him in the middle of everything to screw the um, Henson Cafe sign right in the middle. Again, I wanted, I was envisioning sort of like a, a bistro coffee station or like a coffee cart um, just with a sign above it. So here's how it looks day one. Yeah, you can't really not tell yet either. Just hang on a second. So I started to hang the mugs and I realized visually Visually, I was lining up the shelf with the space. Now that I have the mugs hung and they're kind of like crowded and a little high for me, to be frankly honest, <laughs> I think I need to get them moved down. But since we put mollies in the wall, it's going to be a little bit more of a process. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to decorate them like this and then eventually we'll get to moving them down. But just to, that's my opinion. I think I might put some sort of sign there as well. I'm not really sure because the signs were supposed to go on the shelf. So that's the update. Yeah, no, I couldn't wait. Um, so that was Sunday, Saturday. This is actually yesterday. Um, then I just, I couldn't. 
So I had Jimmy knock the shelves off. I went ahead and I unscrewed the screws. I could do the bottom shelf without any assistance. I can't get on that step stool. But I just took my knee on those pliers. I grabbed the, if you've ever worked with a plastic molly before, they have sort of like a round ring around them. And I just grabbed the ring and I twisted back and forth. Um, these particular mollies don't open up in the back. You can see they're still perfect shaped. Um, they're just there to make the space wider so they can hold on to the screw. So it worked out perfectly. Um, we did, we were left with a little bit of a hole, but I will handle that here in a second. <laughs> but to make life easier for Jim, and you can see we started this project at a quarter to 12, and it's going to go for about a half an hour. Um, you can see to make my, to, I tried to make Jim's a little, a life a little easier. So what I had him do, since we already leveled and measured and marked and, and adjusted and all the things, what I said to him was, measure, put the shelf down where I want it. So basically, the, we left the Fry Life mugs hanging so that I can get that visual uh, line up with the bottom of the mugs. And put the shelf there and we'll mark it. And now what I want him to do, which he did, is we're going to measure from the bottom of the shelf mark from the previous time we hung it to the bottom of the shelf mark now. And it equaled four and a half inches or five and a half inches but it will be different for you if you have to adjust it so that's not important um, so then what I said to him was w line up the screw holes with the use the laser level to line up the screw holes he decided to use the Dollar Tree level w that's a whole thing different okay <laughs> and then measure five four and a half inches down from the hole um, and that's where your new screw will be. It was really just that simple. He marked four and a half inches down on both sides, put the laser level across, um, marked an X where the new screw holes were going to go. And then he repeated the same process we did on Saturday, where we measured up 10 inches from the bottom mark to the top mark because um, we wanted the shelves to be that far apart from each other. And that's it. Um, we had We drilled all new holes, put in new mollies, put in new screws, and then we got stuck. <laughs> you know, it was one of the, it just, it's, sometimes you know Murphy's Law. You guys know Murphy's Law? Sometimes we just have to give ourselves grace. When Murphy's Law comes into effect, just give yourself enough grace to just take a deep breath, Get your hair, head a little clear and then start over. And let's just figure out what we need to do to fix this. Okay? So he was having trouble. First he was having trouble uh, understanding what I was trying to relay to him. And then he had trouble with, um, with the spacing of the, um, of the nail holes. Uh, and base, uh, screw holes, excuse me. And I, told, I did tell him afterwards, I'm like, I think that's because you use the cheaper Dollar Tree level and that has got a huge bubble and it's not very very accurate um, if your bubble is not small enough to fit between the two lines it's not really accurate for being level um, but that's why I like the laser level but so he ended up using the laser level in the end um, he went back he had to fix his um, you know whatever was the problem um, but he just did the same thing so he drilled the holes now for this particular molly there's no steadfast rule with a molly because they come in different sizes. So for this particular molly, we took what was our largest drill bit in our regular DeWalt kit. I think it was, yeah, I think it was 3 16 of an inch, but don't quote me on that. But it doesn't make a difference because if you don't have these mollies, it really doesn't make a difference. But what he did then was he started off with that because that looked like it was going to be big enough and it wasn't. So then he took it and just drilled a couple of times going around like almost like a clock just to widen that hole a little bit. You want to make sure you don't make your hole too wide for the edge of the molly has to catch on the sheetrock. Um, but you want to make it big enough so that you could slide it in pretty easy. Use a hammer to tap it, but th that depends on the molly as well. Some mollies, they tell you just push them in um, and don't tap them, but some get tapped and hammered in. Okay. And then the same thing with the screws. 
just start your screws. He used the we use the black and decker, the little black and decker screwdriver, so we don't over drill. The first shelf went on, hunky dory. The second shelf, not so much. So he was having a lot of difficulty lining up the keyholes in the back. And what's really funny was that neither one of us remembered that the other day when he hung the shelves on the top, he sort of had the same problem. It was just off by about just a sixteenth of an inch. It was just catching on the, the screw was catching on the edge of that keyhole. Um, so what he ended up having to do was um, basically tap the screw over. Now it looks like it's hung and as he's washing the wall, it fell. Now I don't have a magic eraser. I don't know what happened to it. I had plenty and it's like, I don't know if mom used them and we just didn't replace them. But a magic eraser just to take off the pen marks from the previous shelves. Now normally when you hang shelves and you leave pen marks, you won't see it because it's buried by the shelf. But because we ended up moving them, it exposed all of those pen marks. So since I didn't have a magic eraser, I took a, a, a bar cloth, wet with as warm as water as I could stand with a little comet on the end. And he used that just to clean up the pen marks. And that works fantastic. Then I created my own caulking silicone concoction. So if you've been through this whole project with me I told you that I saved the um the chalk paint that I used the stain that I used to edge the counter and to create the coffee cup holders um I saved that uh in a jar in a mason jar and what I decided to do today was to take a little bit of the silicone caulk not silicone the latex caulk that we had um that we also caulked the coffee bar with and I mixed it in with the paint basically I created a little bit of gray silicone instead of cracking out the spackle or going to get spackle just to use a tablespoon of spackle i said let's try this now i will tell you when you see the done picture the bottom holes have been sanded since they're dry the top holes have not jim said i can just do it tomorrow if that's okay so i filled in the bottom holes um jim didn't really fill in the top ones that great but that's okay um there will be decor on these shelves and you really don't really notice it in person as much as you do on camera. It's kind of really like lit up on camera. Um, in person, it's not as noticeable. Um, so then what I did was I wiped it off. I went back in a few minutes and I just hit it with some sandpaper just to get um, that excess off. Okay. And here's how it is. All done. You Like I said, you can still see the holes and eventually... We will go ahead and repair it, um, but for now, it's good enough for me. Um, so hopefully you guys really enjoyed this portion of the coffee bar creation. Um, just to give you some ideas between the coffee mug holders, the palettes, the shelves, um, I hope I was really able to inspire you to give you some idea to kind of create a faux looking cabinet almost. Um, if you guys have any questions at all, leave them in the comments down below. Don't forget to share with friends and family. Don't forget to hit subscribe. Don't forget to come back tomorrow. Don't forget to take care and God bless. And we'll see you next time. Bye.